I don't know why I'm picking that for for a theme. I have a theme song for the for my show. What is it? It goes. It's a wait. Can, uh, let's get a guitar. Where's your acoustic? Let's play it. Hold on. Let's play it because we got to build suspense for the guitar giveaway. Look, there's the guitar. Well, that's not the actual one. That's mine. But we're gonna give away one just like that. All right. Are you ready? Can you hold the computer for a minute. Okay, you want? Right there. Oh, it's okay. It's a big bone, Sunday loud. Talking about your whammy ball and your overdrive. It's a big bone, Sunday loud. Talking about your balls and your drum balls. Yeah, I'll leave this singing up to others, generally. Applause. Thanks for that. Thanks, Taylor Guitars, for... Uh, Providing that nice acoustic uh, for James to uh, lend to me to play that song. Uh, what are we doing today? We're going to give away a guitar, right? To we one of we're going to do that to one of approximately I think it's uh, 150 clinic attendees. I have a bowl here with a whole bunch of names in it. It's a very analog way that we decided to do this. I had all the the names of the the UK clinic attendees printed out on a. Uh, some sheets of paper with space in between. And uh, you want to do that? No, I'll do it. Oh, yeah. There's the guitar. Fantastic. Yeah. We should have thought about this, like a little stand for the computer. I'll or be something. a stand. I'll be a biological stand. But anyways, all if, if anybody attended one of these clinics in the UK, they were automatically entered uh, to win that guitar or one exactly like it just behind me. Not ex that exact guitar, disclaimer, because that's mine. But one exactly like it. And uh, we're going to give it away in a few minutes here. Not just yet. We've got to build the suspense a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, where are we today? We're in Jacksonville, Florida. We are in Jackson. Hi. We're in Jacksonville, Florida. Yeah. And uh, we have... Uh, oh, look, it's Pete. It's our sound guy, Pete. Now, everybody knows that I always, uh, uh, you know, talk about sound guys and problems with guitar tones and stuff like that. This guy is one no of the problem. good ones. No, no problem. No problem. Just make you out. <laughs> He's one of the good ones. He's a good man. Look at him right he knows now. How to keep us happy. Checking mic positions on the rig. Oh, well, I'd love it. So, where do you like the microphone, anyway? Generally speaking, Me? just uh, off the center. Yeah, just off the, the dust cap. So right into the paper a little bit. Yeah, but sometimes it kind of depends how I try to move it. But I like. Uh, What's that? Parallel. Parallel. Parallel to the uh, to the cone. Oh, okay. It's a pretty. Like so, just a little angled. Yeah, but it doesn't really need it because that's when the high when they're kind of a little more brutal, more high. End. Mm. The, the thing that's quite interesting about touring is you know we're on show fifty of this year. Yeah. But yet, even though the set is kind of similar every day, there's always something different. There's always something low. There is different, obviously different PA's, or we've got we've had. Um, a different venue. Yeah, different. and we've had three different sound um, engineers on the tour. We have, Through yeah. logistical reasons. And they all do things slightly differently, don't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, they do. All yeah. of them make the audience very happy, but um, all have their own... You know, they're musicians just like us, aren't they? And they, yeah. They, 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 they feel music differently. They do. They do. And yeah, it's, it depends on the room you're in every day and stuff. Some days it's bigger, some days it's smaller, more roomy, more tight. Some days you can be in a great big room, but it sounds tight. You know, it's just interesting. This room looks like this is a beautiful old theater. Florida Theater, this is called. In, <laughs> there's Pete in Jacksonville. So gorgeous room. So is this, for disclaimer, I'm not, this is the home of Skinner. Is that correct? Skinner is from Jacksonville. That's correct. Yeah. Uh, so we <laughs> in the UK, we were talking about this last night. This band, I, I was surprised when I first joined you guys to do these tours in 2020 that you were playing the song Freebird uh, in the that, UK. That means tonight's the last one, isn't it? Unless we... Well, could be. Yeah. And, and it, when these guys came, I think what happened was Freebird almost became a synonymous with the, the closing set song of your band, of Correct. CRS, yeah. maybe even more so than it's like, oh, they're going to play Freebird. It's like people just expected it, like yeah. your fans, mm -hmm. you know? Like it wasn't even necessarily maybe that huge of a song in the UK. Because I was talking about... No, it was not at all. So they've just 
know it from you almost like you i don't would... know anyone else in the uk that plays that song yeah um live so we would play it at, at the end of every uh freebird tonight then says kathy <laughs> Uh, we would play it at the end of every show in the UK, but over here we did it in the first show and it was almost like kind of got a like, oh, really sort of response, you know, like they're really good. Someone came to me at the signing after and went, don't play free, but I'm like, <laughs> OK. <laughs> <laughs> so then we didn't do it for a while. But once we got to Atlanta, we were like, all right, we're getting towards Florida and, mm -hmm. you know, Skinner's from Jacksonville. It's like we should probably let's try and put it back in, maybe with a little disclaimer, like and the disclaimer, you know, is like, hey, sometimes people sort of take the piss out with this song or yell Freebird or whatever. We're actually going to do it verbatim, like the record or whatever, uh, with respect. I, from what I, from my understanding, I think that, you know, it's so overheard in the US and probably overheard not done accurately. Yeah. Or in the UK, that doesn't happen. So they're not, you know, the stairway is the equivalent of that in the UK, isn't it? So. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Or if it's Kathy, um, status quo. Status quo, right. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, all right, well, let's look at some comments here for a few minutes before we pick the winner of the guitar. So just so you guys know, the deal uh, for those that are just joining is we did uh, six clinics in the UK uh, in conjunction with Sir and Guitar Guitar. Uh, and all the attendees to those UK clinics specifically were entered in a drawing to win uh, Pete Thorne's signature model guitar right there. So... Um, so we're going to pick one of those. And I, I believe I've got about 150 names here in a bowl that are all, I spent my morning cutting up uh, a bunch of little slips of paper. There. So we're going to mix it around. We're going to shake them around. We're going to, don't lose any. I won't don't lose any. We're going to, I was very careful to make sure that they all ended up in the bowl. Did you cut these? I cut them myself. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my friend uh, formatted them on a sheet, Dennis, mm -hmm. for me. And mm -hmm. then so that they had lots of space between them. And then I cut them all up into little strips. Because I just said, we could have used something like a, like a digital picker name picker, nah. and I was like, "That's not. No. We got to go analog. Pick them out of the bowl. We'd this is an analog. We have to do a recount. This is an analog stage. We got a seventy-one Marshall over there and a sixty-eight four by twelve. Right? That's your stuff. Mm -hmm. We got my stuff over there. This is an analog stage. So, so going back to the master classes, they were really good fun, weren't they? They feel like a lifetime ago now. They were really they were good, good fun. fun. Yeah, they were. They were. Uh, they were. Uh, like i don't know interactive and i don't know it, it, most clinics you go to nothing wrong with it but most clinics you go to if they're held specifically like oh a clinic at a music store or something you're going to go there and the guitar player might have a smaller rig or pared down or something and then you might play over tracks or something like that and it'll be that vibe what about doing clinics in a room like this you know with a full pa full volume full it's a, it's full rigs yeah, because we get to play as a full band and people will come in and sound check and listen to what we were doing. And they could ask questions directly about like, oh, how are you getting that guitar sound or mm -hmm. that kind of thing, right? You showed them your rig mm -hmm. and we were able to demonstrate that stuff. So I really enjoyed doing the, the UK clinics. It was really cool. My knees hurt says, so you're going to be playing Freebird. I think so. I think so. I think we are. Who we got here? We got Victor. Uh, Dan loves Freebird. Mm -hmm. That's pretty cool. How many folks we got online? We got 234. We're going to wait for a little while until there's some more people here. Make sure everybody's here. I know you guys in the UK, it's getting late for you, so we won't wait too long, but give it a few more minutes here and stuff. Add and some Captain B. Uh, what's that? Captain Beyond tunes. I don't know. It seems a little niche. I'm from the UK, and I'm, you'd have to. Yeah. You'd have to teach me. I really? Yeah. I think it's maybe a little niche for us maybe a little niche maybe uh let's see yeah i heard freebird so many times yeah but not like we do it <laughs> so quickly if we talk about this guitar a second yeah and because you've got another one on tour as well yeah yeah um and you flick between them depending on what mood what mood you're in or yeah well the other one is a kind of still to this day sort of a custom one-off mm -hmm. um that i mean i think eventually it'll be a spec you yeah. know that you can get but it's got a hotter bridge pickup and it's got the floyd on it and it's a uh it's a fu tone floyd with the big brass block and all that stuff so it's a little bit more like the you know the mm -hmm. rock uh you know 80s style or something like that guitar 
Um, and I love it because it's so solid and I can just do, you know, the Floyd you can go crazy with and stuff like that. There's a couple of times in the set where we do that, mm -hmm. you know, that I needed that for. Uh, but this one, I always say that, you know, the Wilkinson Bridge is basically like a standard sort of two post style bridge without a lock knot and all that stuff, which for many people, they like that, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, right, yeah, so I have this. You have one, one of my guitars and it does not. It does not move. It's really great. It's really great. Yeah, the, the tuning stability is true. I always say it's about 90% of the way to a Floyd Rose, mm -hmm. you know, I would say. you still got the nut to contend with, but as long as that's cut really well and stuff, it's which they are in these, you know, it's great. So so it's the version that probably most people, I think, would, you know, but if you're a real rocker and you want Floyd or whatever, you know, I've got that one guitar that's that's like that now. So, um, but I, I do love the... Uh, I gotta say, like, I'm just such a sucker for red guitars. <laughs> so I love the Garnet Red. It's absolutely one of my favorite colors. Um, you should show us your, but we had an interesting, uh, we've said some interesting vintage guitar stuff on this tour. You wouldn't mind grabbing your, your guitar that we figured out what it was finally? Yeah. I'll just show you guys a cool old guitar. Um, James, James is a vintage guitar buff as well as a new guitar buff. So he's got Sirs and, other new guitars but he's also got things like this which we took to gruens Ooh, this one. uh Ooh, recently crazy. to have it uh well basically you were like what the heck is this thing i so think the, i know what it is so this came you from know. the this came from the uk um from from a, a friend of mine and there's always been a couple of questions of what where it what is it what did it start its life yeah uh, and so we you know so i thought let's take it to Gruen's guitars and, and George Gruen. Yeah. And um, after many, many hours, um, they came to the conclusion that it's a, a 1950, it started life as a 1955 gold top with P90s and it's had a lot of, you know, it's had a lot of work done to it. But it's, you know, original top. You can't tell in this light, unfortunately, because the light's kind of no. dark, but it does have some flame in it. That's pretty darn nice, actually. Yeah, there you go, actually. Yeah, uh, there you go yeah, a little bit. Okay. And the seam is almost dead center. So yeah. that that's like almost like unheard of on these. Mm -hmm. And it's you know rather unusual. It's got flame all the way through. It's light flame, but it's pretty. Yeah. And um, so it's like, well, what is this thing? Was it retopped? Was it, you know, was anything changed on it? You know, that kind of thing. And mm -hmm. and they figured out it was a 55. And it feels just that it's got that 55 slight V neck. Mm -hmm. Uh the logo's in the right place yeah. and all that stuff. So it's a Pretty damn cool. And guitar. then we um, we discovered another 55, didn't we? On our yeah, yeah. I found another 55 that I've been thinking about, maybe, you know, because it's really cool. But uh, so, so it's the, been that's kind of the theme for this US tour. 55 Les Pauls. But similar neck, and it was that was that was what was really nice was to try another 55 and go ah, the neck feels yeah much the same, like right in the ballpark yeah. for sure, you know. Yeah. Of, uh, yeah. So pretty cool. Yeah. Um, but um, but we've been pretty good this tour so far. Like not we, buying things. Yeah. Yeah, we haven't spent any money yet. <laughs> Which you'd yeah. usually mid tour, he'll show up with like, "Well, what's that?" And he'd be like, "Oh, I bought this, traded something else." <laughs> yeah. The person who we thought would never buy anything was the one person who bought something. That's true. Yeah, Wayne Banks got a uh, bass seventy-two p. Seventy-two p. He did. Yeah, so it's pretty cool. Yeah. So yeah, I'm happy we got some uh, history about this. Yeah. What else we got here? Let's see before we do our little giveaway here. Uh, Dave is gracing us with his bass guitar chops. It's James's tech. Um, I'm just reading through some of your comments here. Well, there's a super, uh, super something from Charles. Thanks, man. Appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What else we got here? Any new Van Halen songs in the show? You see? I really think we should add I'm the one back for something. Because we're yeah. in the US now. Yeah. Yeah. I mean that would go over here okay. like bonkers, yeah. you know, I think. We don't have I'm the one. We did play Van Halen song though, but uh yeah. Yeah. The yeah, show yeah. is a little bit um it is oh, I keep biting my nail, sorry, it's a bad habit. The show is ever is, is a little bit shorter as well in the in, in the US. Only a little bit. Yeah, only a little bit. Um and I think um we could maybe we could probably sneak another song in. Let's try it in sound check. You want to yeah. see if I can remember it? Yeah. yeah. Well, today maybe we got. See what time Rudy turns up. 
Yeah, I don't want to rely. He hasn't been singing it for a while because or one of our singers had a gig in L.A. last night. So he's like crazy man flying around, mm -hmm. you know, all over the place. Great, great show in Clearwater, says Charles. Thank you. The Sir Aura cut through the mix. My wife and I enjoy it. Thank you. Appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, let's see. Here's somebody coming to the show tonight, I think. Uh, which door should we go to so you can sneak <laughs> us in a sound check? There was uh, sound check parties, wasn't it? Uh, are we doing one tonight? Are we doing one? I think there's a meet and greet, yeah. Yeah, there might be something you can still buy a ticket for. I don't know. Yeah. If it's... Go, to the door, go to the door that sounds the loudest. It means it's the closest. All <laughs> uh, right. Are you going to play Freebird? Well, spoiler alert. Yeah, I think we are because we have to. Did you really just do that? Oh, yeah. Wow. Lots of things, Floyd. Never mind. Never mind. <laughs> Red guitars are best guitars. I agree. I agree. Oh, yeah. Let's see. Uh, amazing to have you both and the rest of CRS cast at the clinic. Can't wait to see you all back here again. We will return. The rest of the certain guitar holding up the laptop. Let's see. Uh, do you also like blood red as a guitar color? Sure. I mean, that's basically like an old SG. Isn't it? Is that what that is? Well, I mean, it kind of looks like I'm just thinking see-through red, so what's, blood red. You know, I, I keep know. going on about Firebird. Yeah. What's yeah. the color I keep I, I keep talking about? What was the custom colors of the Firebird? Oh, the, Firebird? The, 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 you're talking about the Gibson red. Yeah. That's kind of a, that's a great question. Uh, it might be called Crimson or something, I think, but I'm not 100% mm -hmm. sure. Anybody out there know the, you know, like the 60s Firebirds that you'd see that are red, but it's not a see-through red. It's a. Kind of a bright red, almost like Fender's. It it's come, not or... Fiesta, but oh, maybe, mm, maybe Cardinal, maybe, yeah. maybe. I don't know. Yeah, but does anybody I, know I, that the, color? That's the one thing I'm still toying after. I might um, look at the bottom of the chat here in a second, see if anybody has an answer to that. But thanks again for a great run of fantastic shows in the UK. One of the best gigs I've been to, Basing Stoke. Awesome, awesome. Oh. Thank you. Appreciate that. What else we got here? Let's see. Brother and I are coming to the show. Lots of folks coming tonight. That's awesome. Nice. Oh, that was the uh, sound check comment. <laughs> uh, does Sierra's play any semi? 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 Hi, guy. Uh, we don't. We don't. We don't do any solo Sammy. But we are doing a bunch of great American rock and roll. Change the setup a little bit, so I don't want to spoil it. But it's one song after another of great hits with a pretty even mix of bands from across the pond yeah the united states as well as it's good to get that balance and, uh, and we discussed that in our me and greed don't we the... yeah yeah we do yeah a little bit like for example when you if anybody comes to the we've got seven more gigs and if anybody comes to any of the vip meet and greet sound check things uh, you're gonna hear two songs that we don't even do in the show one by a british band one by an american band uh let's see oh yeah elvis played here right in this building right? didn't elvis perform oh yeah yeah wayne was talking about that oh, yeah i think elvis cool. performed this year for those just joining now that's andy greenwood and this is the florida theater where elvis once performed so tonight we might have to do suspicious minds or something there's no, going to be lots know. of random songs sang in the jams I think so, probably. Hopefully not too poorly. All in the key of A. Yeah, all in the key of A. <laughs> some may work, some may not. Uh, what else we got here? Let's see. Wish you guys would come to Fort Worth, says Braxtall. You know, um, that probably a no-brainer. I mean, Dallas, Fort Worth at some point would seem like a tour stop. Mm. Right? Do you do that with the Rumors Band or Texas? We have done some Texas. Yeah, Dallas. Say, say for us, this tour was kind of a taster just to see how um, U.S. audiences kind of took our show. And they, so far, it seems to be going down quite well. Yeah, really good, I would say. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the crowd's been awesome, especially the last two or three have been pretty pretty awesome. Yeah, Cardinal, I thought, was the color. Yeah. Cardinal Red, I think that. Yeah. Yeah, With Cardinal. Viking Red. That's cool. <laughs> Viking Red. Cardinal Red. Oh, that's interesting. Bukovac, the guy you met at uh, Carter's. Oh, yes. Has a 
Cardinal Red Firebird. Interesting. 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 Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, love to see you both in the crowd at Clearwater. Well, we did go out and do a little guitar jam. In the, we did. Uh, sometimes we do that. We run around if there's stairs and we can get off the stage and back on. I'm on the internet. Don't harass me. <laughs> this freaking guy. <laughs> All right, that's right. Okay, uh, what else we got here? Let's see. Yes to top wrapping. Is yours top wrapped? That yes. Oh, it's is a, it? It's only a. Um, I don't have an ABR on it, do I? Oh, yeah. Of course. Yeah. So it's a stop. But also, I have um, top wrapped non, you know, ABR guitars too. And do you like it? Um, uh, the the argument is it makes it a little bit slinkier. Yeah. You don't really feel it. No. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I had one that I tried to do that too, and it just didn't, like the, the brake angle or whatever wasn't right. It, it was like, I, tr I messed with it for 20 minutes trying to get the tailpiece and the bridge right, and it was like, I this isn't working. I stopped just... doing it when I got a vintage tailpiece. Oh, yeah? Because they, they thought there's so much money now. I oh, didn't want to, you didn't want to damage, it, damage it or. You bugger people. up the. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, got it. Yeah, it will uh, kind of screw it up. There's a big old super chat there. Thank you for that. Appreciate that. Probably another another five, ten minutes here, and then we're going to give away this guitar. We're going to announce the winner. Uh, coming tonight from Orlando. That's awesome. Ooh, you made a little great. journey. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Who's this? That's Paul. Thanks for the super chats, you guys. Appreciate that. Uh, absolutely killer show in Clearwater. Thank you. Haven't seen a good rock show or rock show that good in over 10 years. Well, amazing. Sound was killer, loud and in your face in the front row. Hope you guys come back. Surprised to find we were the youngest couples in the front row. <laughs> you know, it just depends on the city that you're in because we've actually had, I seem to remember like uh, Cincinnati was a pretty young crowd. Like, I so was Atlanta. Varied, but, so and Atlanta? Atlanta was, yeah, Atlanta was too. And Detroit actually was, yeah. Yeah, so we've sent uh, on average, I would say we've had maybe some younger people over here. Mm -hmm. So, um, the band has a PBS show out where I don't know how often they play it or what, but a lot of people yeah, have said played that it a couple of times. Yeah, yeah, that they saw us on PBS. So that's obviously it's going to be an older crowd, and then there's people that know about the band from YouTube because you've got quite a lot of YouTube followers. So all the recent Cambridge uh, videos on YouTube, that that whole gig was. Um was put together so we could so we could make a new pbs special right 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 yeah and the pbs special has helped i would say with oh massive pbs are great sure. yeah great partners yeah yeah uh oh that's interesting interesting james will be interested in this you're not far from jimmy's vintage music store in auburndale florida great store with great stuff at good price it's time to be closed yeah he'll be he'll be, <laughs> he'll be leaving now and on his way uh braxall is still asking about the dark charcoal guitar well haven't announced it yet braxall so but it's coming like give it 30 days i would say i might have said that last week but i'll talk to the sir guys about it there's reasons for it so but uh it's gonna happen i won't ask any questions yeah <laughs> uh I haven't made it a, a secret, really, that uh, that it's uh, that it'll happen. Uh, are you going to try and catch the beat tour with Blue Vi, uh, Tony Levin, and Danny Carey? Have you heard about this, the King no. Crimson? So the '80s uh, King Crimson album, like the album Discipline, for instance, mm -hmm. brilliant, awesome record by King Crimson, uh, with the '80s King Crimson lineup. Mm -hmm. uh, Adrian Blue is not; he's not playing with King Crimson anymore. But he's going to go out and do a tour. And they were trying to figure out who's going to do the, like where they play that music from three albums yeah. in the eighties. And, um, so Steve Vai is going to be the other guitar player. Wow. So no Robert Fripp, but you've got Mr. Steve Vai, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Tony Levin, of course, original bass player, or, you know, from that era. Mm -hmm. And then, and, uh, and Danny Carey is going to play drums for Tool. Oh. So they're going to go out and do, uh, and they're calling it beat. I love that like frame by frame and Mate Kudasai and those songs are from, uh, discipline i love that record it's so cool so yeah i would like to see a show actually maybe i'll try and figure that out i haven't even looked at the dates no but... i haven't so we'll check them out uh jason here is asking about your rig you know he's using an interesting rig let's take a look at it just for hell of it yeah we're, we're here and this seems to be working well the stream today 
So it's a, a true uh, digital and analog hybrid with an old Marshall Super Bass head. It's a 50 watt though, so 1986. I don't know if they called them supers if they were uh, 50 watt, but it's a base spec. 71 or 72? Early 72. Early 72. So we both have 72s. Mm -hmm. 72, 68 cap. And a 68 cap with G12Ms with yeah. Pulsonic Cone greenbacks, right? So it's a really, really, really good sounding guitar rig. Um, you can turn it up to like eight and it, it's like, sounds killer with the bass. I really like the bass spec actually. Um, I'm a lead spec guy like myself, but for your sounds, it's just killer. And then you're boosting it. So then, then you've got, uh, this stuff over here, he's got Axe Effects Incorporated and he's running at 4k, but he's got a Boss Waza tube amp expander down there. And so there's some effects in the, you run into the Axe Effects, essentially you take a send out of the Axe Effects into the front of the Marshall. And then you take the speaker out of the Marshall into the Waz, it loads down the amp. Then you, the back end of the Axe FX is in the loop yeah. of the Waz for things like delay and, and reverb or volume. The main thing you're using it for is volume boost, really, like a solo boost, right? Like, so you've got a couple presets where you jump within the Waz. So both, yeah, by MIDI, both, both, um, both racks are being used at different points. So most of the tone of the, of, for my whole show is just the amp. And occasionally I'll use some reverb or delays, or if I just use the axe effects to try and boost it because it's hitting the Waza, it's yeah. just compressing a little bit more. So then we found out another way by incorporating MIDI where you can actually um, use the different rig settings on the Waza to turn, make it um, yeah. have a solo boost. Yeah. And then, yeah, you've got your, your rigs in the Waza, which allows you to, to actually boost right in the uh like so, so he can have a, a three or four db boost coming right out of the waz uh, and it allows him to get a solo boost over the band yeah. so you can add a virtual pedal or something in the axe effects in front of the amp to get more gain and then add a little volume boost in the waz to get more volume so that's how, that's that's the rig mm -hmm. and uh, on the floor it just looks like that with the the, the foot controller for the axe effects is with an expression pedal and it means i've got the one cable so if i need an acoustic or so there's a um, which I can just go direct out of the Axe Effects, or there's there's one electric guitar song in the show where I don't have the amp on at all. I'm still yeah. using the amp modeling in the Axe Effects, and it sounds pretty good. So yeah, so if you know you want to take a DI out of the Axe Effects for acoustic, right? For or like he says, one song not incorporating the amp, um, just DI right out of the Axe Effects to the front of house because it just worked. So it's interesting. Yeah. yeah. So that's your rig. It's not as complex and as cool as yours. Well, mine's. I don't know if it's, I guess it's complex, but it's similar. It's just that I'm using individual pedals for the back end and stuff like that. That's the, uh, you guys know my rig, but I think I showed you this on the, a while ago on the Nick Carter tour, but it's basically like, uh, there, yeah. It's like, it's like that, you know, with the, these guys are in the effects loops of the two amps in parallel. Um, this pedal controls the volume of the whole post part of the rig, and then all the pedals are in the loop switcher in the front. So that's that's really my rig, uh, with the two the two heads back there. So I did a little kind of rig rundown thing on the Nick Carter tour, and uh, you know one of these Sunday lives where I played through it and stuff. And maybe you guys saw that, but it's basically the same rig. Got the sure wireless back there. That's it really. And Jesse also plays guitar, and he's using an FM3 down there. So the Fractal. So you know they're gonna do a line check in a minute. So if we want to do it on stage, we'll have to. Oh yeah, you guys doing line line check? How soon? How many? How much time we got? Uh, a couple, couple minutes. Couple minutes. Shall we give away a guitar? Let's do that. Can you give us a drum roll? Okay. Uh, no. <laughs> that's gonna be. That's gonna be perfect. All right. Hold on a second. I've got a bowl here full of full of names. Uh, that I cut out myself out of paper this morning in order to make this a fair, a fair, I'm mixing them all up right now, individual 150 pieces of paper in here with all the clinic attendees from a U.S. clinic. Uh, mixing it up. I said, oh, let Timmy do the drum roll. Tim, can you come and do a drum roll? I know a professional do a drum roll, yeah? Yeah. Sweet part of you, dude. I'm going to keep mixing these up while I don't look. I'm not going to get any on the ground, though. I, I wanted a bigger bowl, but this is what we had. So, not looking. 
Sorry, stop Not looking. This is for the guitar on the stand right there. Going to one of the UK clinic attendees, Sir Guitars, Guitar Guitar. Thanks for being a great partner in the clinics that we did over there. And uh, Timmy Brown, take it away. I'm going to look away. pieces of paper at a time i could feel it and i was like finally yeah, well, i just got one ladies and gentlemen the guitar winner oh i'm looking at it upside down matthew long you are the winner show it to the camera you are the winner show it to the camera of the sir pete thorn oh. hss standard signature I, I get the name of my own guitar mixed up sometimes signature standard hmm. hss Sir Guitars, uh, Guitar Guitar, Classic Rock Show. What a pleasure this has been. Matthew, are you watching right now? I wonder. You're going to get a guitar mm -hmm. just like this for attending one of our clinics. God, that was uh, that was exciting. Oh, I was excited. Great job. All right, let's leave Dave, the stage. Dave, can we do a line check? You, got any, oh, you want to do a line check? <laughs> how bad do you want to do it? Really bad. Do you want us to go? Yes, please. See see how they treat me around here? Try now. No All respect. Right, okay. Thank you. <laughs> All right, Matthew, how exciting! Thank you. Fantastic. <laughs> Thanks for being a part of that. You're welcome. Yeah. Yeah. Congratulations. I'm gonna leave awesome. you to do your normal um, Sunday live, and uh, I'll see you. Don't be late. An hour today. See how 4 they 30. treat me around here. I'm gonna be late. When can was you the last? Four thirty. Can you remind everybody he's gonna be on stage at four thirty? When was the last time I was late? Bye. We just gave away a guitar. Did I win? You didn't win. Oh, You're in the band. Damn it. Here, read his name one more time. Make it exciting. Congratulations, Matthew Long, <laughs> on winning your Sir Guitar. He's, everybody in the band's pissed off. It's not theirs, so. though. Yeah. Yeah. Well done, mate. Congratulations. Yeah. I'd love to win a guitar. Look at this. It's all, this is uh, what a, a backstage CRS looks like. Uh, it's all glamour. It's all, all our clothes. Yeah, that might be my suitcase. Uh, it's gonna, a little disaster. It's going to go do some laundry. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm going to go up to my dressing room, which, okay, here's the other thing. The reason that my suitcase is downstairs is because there's no elevator in this building. I didn't want to carry a 55 pound suitcase up here, up here. Up here, up here, <laughs> and up here. I'll carry myself up. But that's it. All right, that was uh, that was really fun. Um, thanks for tuning in. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry uh, to those that didn't win. I'm sure, it was disappointing. But I wonder if Matthew's in the chat here. Let's see, does it come with a case? It, it most definitely comes with uh, some sort of uh, protection. I'm not sure if it's a case or a, uh, or a gig bag, to be honest, but probably a bag. I think, uh, the, sir, is like, uh, I know there's a debate over the years, like internally and stuff, like, do we do cases? Do we do bags? And they've been doing bags for a number of years and stuff and always trying to, uh, to offer a, uh, like a really cool gig bag. So they, they, they experiment with different designs and stuff like that, but I bet it's going to be a bag. So, uh, okay. Uh, what is line checks as my knees hurt? So line check is actually like pre sound check, making sure when you've got everything plugged in that all the inputs are routed, right. And stuff like, you know, the drum overheads aren't reversed on the, cause you've got a lot of inputs that you have to patch to a, you know, all of the microphones and all the DIs and everything on stage has to go to, you know, input one through however many inputs could be, you know, 35 or 40 or something like that, or maybe more, you know, depending on the band you're in. And sometimes things can get reversed or mispatched or things like that. So just check all the lines and make sure everything is patched right. Um, and then you're ready for sound check, you know, after that, then you can make sure that, uh, that uh, everything sounds good. So you're hearing, if you can hear that, I don't know if you can, but they're just going to briefly play through each instrument or talk through each microphone, tap the mics on the kit, maybe, and make sure the 
drum mics are all patched correctly, that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I don't know if Matthew's here or not. I'm kind of looking through the chat to see if somebody can tell me. Uh, but this, it's pretty exciting. I'm, I'm stoked that... Uh, that, that we finally did that because it's been a little long time coming. I mean, we ended the, U, the UK run and Europe dates uh, in uh, uh, late February. So, you know, it's, it's, thanks for your patience waiting to, for us to announce the winner and stuff. And uh, yeah, all right. Let's see. Want to see the parallelizer, says Andy. I went and bought one. It's great. Yeah, they're cool, man. Um, parallelizer. I mean, well, if you got one, you know what it looks like. But it's basically just a a little mixer with, you know, return levels for all the different effects and stuff. And you know what it is. If, if you've got it, it works terrific. Uh, so a uh, question about James Rig here, Jason. So uh, is he using the power amp from the TAE for stage volume? Yeah, he is. And it's more than loud enough. I mean, he can easily... You know, equal my um God, I need a haircut. My hair is like <laughs> I need to get it even out here. Like, what is happening in the back? Party in the back. Um uh yeah, so TAE power amp is what he uses on stage. Yeah, and I used it last year. I used it uh uh with my SL sixty eight in a very similar way. I used it for solo booths and also, you know, uh some delays and reverbs and stuff like that. So Ian was asking about how you enter uh, this guitar giveaway. Uh, it was attendees of the clinics in the UK that we did. So everybody that went to a guitar, guitar, sir, guitar, CRS clinic sound check party at six of the gigs in the UK, which we're in like, uh, we did it, I think in Birmingham, but yeah, uh, Glasgow, uh, London, and three others. Uh, and uh, so everybody that, that came to those clinics was, was automatically entered to win uh, the HSS signature Pete Thorne guitar. Uh, that's Eston Ray. Just a small thank you for all the wonderful info and entertainment you bring us every week. Hey, thanks. It's fun, man. I, I love doing these. It's a blast. So, yep, yep. Uh, let's see. Kathy says, so wish I was there. Missing a CRS fix. I saw your name this morning, Kathy, in the in the bowl when I was cutting out all the all the names for the guitar giveaway. So, anyways, uh, we'll be back. We'll see you. Uh, is it a living? You mean what I do now? Uh, everything contributes towards my living, definitely. That I'm that I'm out doing. Gotta gotta pay those bills. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Line check. <laughs> Just bought a JEL20. I think I'll like it, says Leroy. It's a great little amp. Um, they're a, uh, you know, like a great modded Marshall kind of sound like you would expect from my friend Dave. And uh, real punchy and sounds bigger than, than its size, that's for sure. Uh, let's see. What else we got here? Ch -ch 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 what else are we talking about? Just bought a 1959 hand-wired 100 watt. That's a beast. Can't wait to get the brown sound. Turn it on 10. Those are great. Uh, you know, they're they're uh, wired up great. They've got all the, all the right stuff in them and everything. And, they're you know, if you want to tweak here and there, it's really easy to do in them. Definitely, definitely a cool amp. I hope you enjoy. Yep. Uh, let's see. Uh, this is interesting. Glenn Michael Thompson said, just bought a new amp, a Fender KBX 100 watt, I think, keyboard amp for $200 Canadian. Great as a little practice PA. You know, they are basically, a keyboard amp is basically a small PA. It's basically a mono, I mean, they're usually mono PA, you know, it's just like a, uh, a you know, you can plug it, like you say, and it, it's good acoustic guitar amp. You know? I could tell that's James's amp, if you can hear it. I don't know if it gets through the compression and stuff on on uh, StreamYard here, but uh, yeah. Uh, let's see. Ben Coombs got a Life's in Les Paul. That's cool. I didn't know that. How do you like it? 
Uh, Steven got a Soldano Astro first gig in a few weeks, thinking of using IRs in front of house and 212 on stage. Sounds like a good idea to me. Should work good. Yeah. Uh, who else we got here talking? Todd and Tommy. Tommy says, uh, my guitar tech tells me the Crate Blue Voodoo is the amp that everybody wants and nobody can get. <laughs> I don't know what a blue voodoo was. I mean, it might have been like a modded JCM 800 for all I know. It's funny. A lot of amps were like the, for instance, the Laney, uh, what were they called? Pro something or other, or uh, like the black Laney heads in the 80s were basically JCM 800s. Um, the VTMs, you know, 60s and 120s were basically modded Marshall but with like kind of Jose mods that you could tweak. You can make them sound bad, but you can also make them sound basically just about exactly like a Jose or very, very, very close. So those were sleepers. I mean, there's all kinds of interesting, interesting stuff, you know, uh, from, uh, from those days. Uh, do you have a favorite new pedal? Hmm. I don't think there's anything I've tried recently that's like super awesome. I've got a video coming out for the Multi Cab 4 from Sackalus, which is a speaker simulator pedal. Uh, it's pretty cool. Um, the video sounds really good listening to it in retrospect. It's, it's you know, for you guys that have like pedal preamps or or maybe you want to take a tap off your head and send it to, to front of house, kind of like the fellow that just had the Astro and wants to send IRs to front of house. You could do that with this little box with any amp. Um, you know, as long as you're still using a cabinet, you still need to have speakers or load the head with something, you know, uh, so th that's coming out, but it looks favorite. I don't, I don't uh, it's been using the same stuff for a little while now. So I I'm, I'm realizing I really like the sound of my little Dunlop mini wah, uh, cause I use it a little bit on this tour and for a couple things and it, it's really good sounding for being such a tiny little thing. You know, you kind of almost got to be a little delicate with them because it's like you can't really stomp on it because it's like you'll bust it right off the dual lock on the board, you know, if you're not careful. So whenever I stand on it, I'm always like a little careful not to kick it too hard. So it goes flying across the stage and disconnects my entire guitar signal. Uh, but but it sounds really good. Like it sounds legit, like a cool wah to me. So that's one that I haven't really spoken about before. Thomas says, love that I can see you live from Maui. That's awesome, man. Hope, hope you're doing good out there. Love Maui. Uh, yeah. Let's see. What time is it? Just so that I know how much time I've got before sound check. It's 3.39, 3.40. All right. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, saw Mammoth support Slash at Wembley. I saw that they played Wembley. Um, Wembley Arena, right? Uh, on Friday. That's awesome. Hope it was a great show. Uh, where's the new compression? Oh, new compression pedal coming out. You're working on getting... Uh, I have a video for a compressor that's coming out relatively soon. But not for another three, four weeks or so. Freed, yeah, mentioning that you still slash. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm sure it was a great rock and roll show. Uh, do you play in a band or something? Cause I've never heard of you. <laughs> I'm just some jackass from Canada. Uh, got an old Echoplex project. I'm doing a complete teardown restoration, man. We have come a long way today. I'm a vintage guy, but I can't imagine how some folks pay premium. I mean, that's a, if you can work on an Echoplex, it's like a next level. There's not a lot of folks I know, like that's kind of a specialized thing, you know? So, uh, you know, like there's a couple guys in LA, I think, that people send old Echoplexes to to get fixed up when they're not working. Um, and that's it, you know, not very many. What's your old, or sorry, what's your favorite pedal uh, form noise gate? You know, um, I've got a uh, MXR smart gate that, to be honest, has saved me numerous times when, when there's like issues with a certain venue that's just got noisy, like occasionally in England, there's these fire loops or something, or I don't know what it like. It's for the fire alarm in a building and it's a loop or something. I don't get, I don't understand it, but 
uh, you'll play in some places and you'll be like, why am I getting so much RF through the pickups in this place? And it's got something to do with the fire alarm. I don't know. It's rare, but it happens sometimes. And it always seems to be right where I stand on stage because you might move over to the other side of the stage and it goes away. But, you know, it's something broadcasting some kind of signal on the stage that gets into pickups. And anyways, I'll hook up the smart gate to the input of my pedal board. Um, and it really seems to work great, you know, in, in those circumstances. I'm just going to close the door. But, uh, get some scrums. thing work the volume control here to turn off the speaker there we go <laughs> with the drums going up and down i don't know why in theaters they put a stage feed in every room it's i guess if you were taking a break you'd know when to go back down and read your lines if you're doing some sort of play or something like that but uh it always drives me crazy when there's some speaker with you can hear all of line check and everything in every room so in this room it's right there up on the wall Generally, they give you a volume control to turn it off, which is what I just did. Uh, yeah. Tommy's a bit of a piss taker. Let's have some fun with Tommy. Do you know who Alan Holdsworth is? Probably not. Tommy, do I know who you are? Does anybody know who Tommy is? Probably not. Uh, let's all make fun of Tommy just a little bit. Let's Jimmy Mac, have you ever tried Wolf Tone pickups? What did you think? No, I, I never actually have, but I know they get great uh, rave reviews by folks that have you know, they seem to be quite popular. You know, uh, there's a number of um, of uh, the pickup manufacturers out there that I haven't gotten a chance to try yet. And one of them is like, the, doesn't they have a pickup called the, the Marshall Head Wolf Tone? And I that sounds like it's up my alley, so I would love to to try those at some point, but I just haven't. Um, but there's so many great, I mean, like, you know, I love my pickups, but hey, I like a lot of pickups out there. The the uh, Rewind, Pariah, um, Motor City, you know, there's a bunch of the smaller manufacturers over the years that I love, you know, stuff that they do. Tommy, can you hear me? Good one, Ian. <laughs> Who is this guy? I saw a great uh, Jason Isbell uh, today on uh, on uh, threads. Somebody was like, who are you? And he said, I'm your Google assistant, but I take Saturdays off. So Tommy, I'm your Google assistant, but I take Sundays off. So you're going to have to do it yourself today. <laughs> Has Tommy ever touched anything similar to his avatar? <laughs> Uh, I know Wolfie used to be a regular in my shop, says Scott. That's cool. Uh, yeah, I'd love to try the Marshall heads sometime. Just to, you know what I should do is uh, get a set of his just to see what they sound like and put them in my SG because I've I've got the original pickups in my old SG, which are probably the 498R and whatever, you know, the, the typical Gibson pickups that they put in their guitars forever. I'd love to get some, like a new pot assembly that's you know true 500k the whole nine yards for the sg as well as like maybe some different pickups see you how know, the guitar sounds just for fun so uh oh now tommy's getting a little racist so we have to uh ban user and delete their comments okay taken care of uh let's see uh and Google, what's the weather today? <laughs> what year is your SG? It's at 2000. Um, so it's the first guitar that I ever, well, I was affiliated with Gibson for about 10 years as an artist from about 99 through 2009 or 2010. And um, before Sir. And so I used to be like a Gibson endorser. And uh, the SG was the first guitar that they ever got to me. So they basically lent it to me and then i recommend this to anybody out there that is you know touring or doing things in bands and stuff and you want to like have a endorsement relationship with the company 
uh, try this approach. Um, I said, lend me the guitar and I'm going to earn it from you. And so what I would do is for the next uh, six months, we I was in a band that was doing a lot of television and like we were doing all the, you know, some daytime shows. We did the the uh, Tonight Show, we did a bunch of stuff like that. And I would record because it was so long ago, I would record on a videotape uh, all the programs. And then at the end of six months, I walked into Gibson with this videotape with all the, and I would transfer them, you know, between uh, VHSs and stuff like that later. And I made like a, like a reel basically. And I took it into Gibson and I, I handed it to Matt, who's still, I'm still friends with, the, he was the, the, uh, you know, artist relations guy, Gibson back then. I handed him this tape and I go, this is all the stuff I've done with your guitar in the last six months. And it was a, you know, a collection of different television shows and stuff like that. And he was like, man, I don't think he'd ever had anybody do that before. And he was like, that guitar is yours. So, and I played that SG on every show. So, um, yeah. So that's that. And I still got that SG. Got, got it in, I think it was like a 2000 model that I got in 99. Because I seem to remember using it on tour in 99. On a particular tour I was on. So... Tom, Tom says, I'm also Tommy, please don't ban me. <laughs> no, you're good, dude. You're good. It's just the, uh, the, you know, folks out there that can't play nice. Gotta have their five minutes of fame or whatever. It'd be weird to be somebody that gets a charge out of trying to stir up garbage on the internet, right? That's like you're, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to do this today. <laughs> it's like everybody else is like well adjusted is like oh man like really and they're like this like i don't know it's a strange the internet brings out all kinds of things in people doesn't it you know good and bad but yeah like ben said don't be a tommy you know let's be grown-ups and nice to one another that's why i always say at the end of every program be nice to one another <laughs> Guitars for your project says just had soldier surgery right shoulder it had to get three months of subs to cover my gigs first time in 45 years wow man sorry to hear that um i and i know that that at uh you know as you get older like i remember my dad when he was probably around my age or maybe a little bit older my age now i remember he fell down and uh had a fall and he broke his collarbone and it took him forever to recover from that and like when you're when you're younger, it's one thing, and as you get older, these things can be it can be long recoveries, right? I had a fall, man, on my knee, on my left knee, um, as I was getting up on a riser right at the beginning of the Nick Carter tour. It was the first day of production rehearsals. I remember I got up on the riser and I tripped and fell down and I landed on my knee, and I it was like ah that sucks, you know, but it wasn't like severely hurt. But man, there was like it did something to cartilage or something in there, and I couldn't put any pressure on that knee till around now i don't really feel it now but as recently as like two months ago i was still feeling it so that's like a good solid it took five months or something to to start to feel normal again you know it's just like really like you know uh you're going nuts any idea how to make useful time of this you know what about learning another language like there's so many great um i'm gonna open the door again because i think the, the wi-fi is a little better with the open they're done with line check um, like I've, I've been trying to put a little more effort and get back into learning more Japanese again, cause I just love it. Um, what about that? What about like, there's all these great apps and stuff now where you can, uh, you know, they basically like read you real conversational scenarios and stuff like that. And you, you kind of like can pick out and then, you know, you can like, there's this Japanese, it's, it's actually, there's a bunch of different languages I think that you could do, but one of them is Japanese with this one app I got and it plays you movies or popular TV shows in Japanese. And then you're watching it and then it's got subtitles below and it breaks everything down, all the conversations and stuff. And it's really kind of fun, you know, to get into. Um, I don't know if that's interesting to you or not, but uh that might be one thing uh let's see what else we got here <laughs> graphite and cigar says afternoon everyone for anybody just joining now we just gave away a guitar a little while ago this gentleman right here matthew long 
there you are. So I don't see that he's in the chat, but uh, which is unfortunate. I was hoping that everybody would probably watch from from the uh, the guitar guitar uh, contest giveaway. This was, these were uh, attendees of uh, the six clinics that the, the classic rock show did in in, uh, in cahoots with Sir and Guitar Guitar in the UK. Some of our UK shows. So everybody that attended one of those clinics was entered in a drawing for a Pete Thorne signature Sir guitar, and Matthew Long was the name that I picked out of a hat. Not a hat, a bowl. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. So that's exciting stuff. Uh, do you own any pre-Rolla Pulsonics? I don't. Uh, I have just uh, 70s Blackback G12Ms. I've got lots of those. Well, not lots, but I have nine uh, in various cabinets. I really like those. Um, some of the, like James's cabinet, his 68 sounds great, but the greenbacks can be all over the map. Maybe it's just the age of the speakers. Um, and I've tried some that just sound kind of like, no, I don't like them as much as some of the blackback G12Ms and they're cheaper, the blackback G12Ms. So I've got a bunch of those. Uh, I will say the guys at line six have, uh, cause they own a bunch of gear for all the amps they've modeled and cabinets and speakers and things. They have this. Um, old Marshall cabinet from like 1966 or something. It's like super early with the 20 watt greenbacks in it. Um, and that cabinet sounds like unbelievable. You can't, they won't let you play very loud through it, but I've played a PT 100 through it before. And oh my God, it sounds good with my amps, that cabinet, but it's really, really minty. And uh, so it's, it's really well taken care of. And it's nice using with something like the PT 100, just a master on it and turn it down and not have to crank it up too much. Uh, Cause it's only an 80 watt speaker cab. And you know, so, but it, man, does that cabinet ever sound good? So I, th I think the thing is they're kind of all over the map, depending on how hard they've been used and, and stuff like that. So, uh, ever had any run-ins with firehouse? No, I remember those guys though. I've never, never met any of them. I don't think, uh, yeah. Todd says 99 was 25 years ago. Remember it's crazy when everything was going to go to the year 2000 and all the computers were going to screw up and all that, but it never happened. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> Let's see. The Rover says, are you like me when you change your strings and they're all floppy, plug in and Van Halen, the crap out of it? Yeah, they sound good for Van Halen, for sure. Van Halen's an interesting combination of, like the speakers aren't really bright and, you know, because of the greenback thing. Um, he went to warmer pickups later on, but it's, you know, the amp can be very aggressive and stuff. So it's like, uh, it's, a, and then the darker strings cause the string and he used pure nickel strings as well. So the strings get dead pretty quick. They'd be pretty dark and warm. So it's always a balance of things, you know, it's always a balance. Uh, are you guys upset with me? Hell no. We love you, man. It's Braxel. Uh, there's a super chat I got to get to there. I'm going to grab that in just a sec. Uh, this is an interesting question. Uh, if you already answered this story, why is the CRS not going to perform west of the Mississippi? You know, I'm sure that would probably come next year. I think um, it was a matter of routing a tour of uh, promoters, um, you know, relationships that they had. People were taking a bit of a chance on this tour because... Um, I mean, both the folks coming that don't, they've never seen a show before, right? And also um, promoters, you know, going, all right, well, we've never booked this band before, but let's see if they can sell, you know, six to 1,200 tickets or something in a theater that holds 1,200. Um, and the, the gigs have been going great. Like in Clearwater the other night was sold out. Uh, the night before that, Fort Myers was 1,100, I think. And so it's like, that's a lot of people coming to see a band like this, that it's a little bit of a mystery. Like, what are we going to get? You know, and um, so I think it's just a matter of, you know, uh, like when you book a tour, I don't know the ins and outs because I've never like been a, uh, a concert promoter and I've never been on the end of booking my own tour or anything like that. So it's not something I've done, but you're kind of trying at least, I think, with something like this break even and just, you know, book something with distances that you can handle driving and not that's the other thing is once you get over the west side of the country you know you're driving really far um 
you know, gas, the truck, days off, like things, you know, going as you're headed west, it can be, whereas on the East Coast, you can hit, like, I think the longest drive on this tour is probably six and a half or seven hours, which isn't a very long drive for America. I've done like 12 hour drives, you know, and you go from like, you know, Seattle to Denver or to, you know, Utah or something, Salt Lake City, and you're driving these vast distances and stuff. So it, I think on this, they just decided, let's do this, you know, kind of East Coast, a little bit of Ohio, uh, you know, Detroit, you know, and then all the way down, you know, to Florida, Atlanta, and then we'll go up the East Coast, go to Connecticut and Jersey and keep it a little more centered out here. Because most of the population of the country happens to be, you know, like a large percentage of you can hit a lot of places and just less distances and stuff. So I think I'm sure it's something to do with that, but uh, that doesn't mean that, you know, I'm sure at some point it would, it would be more dates. We're doing 17. I think they would like to do maybe 20 tops, you know, but uh, in, in the U S because then, you know, you know, 20 in Europe, 20 in the UK, something like that. Mix it up. Uh, I'm going to, uh, head down into the bottom of the chat here or close to it and uh just answer the super chat here in a second what guitar why did i miss that says tom so tom it was a uk clinic attendees that we gave away uh, a guitar to it was about 150 people that attended six clinics in the uk that were like sound check party clinics so you would have had to have been a you know somebody that was living in the uk and was at uh, one of you know the london clinic the birmingham clinic the glasgow scotland clinic you know six shows and uh uh yeah so it was something that we did in coots with guitar guitar and uh and sir so that's that story so it's a pretty small group of folks that were entered actually which was part of the incentive because you did these were clinics that you actually had to buy tickets to it wasn't a free clinic so folks you know ponied up some bucks some pounds rather uh to come to a clinic in the uk but we had a pretty good shot of winning a a nice guitar a raffle for a guitar you know you're basically a one in 150 chance i think of winning so uh arthur there with a super chat you missed my last super duper chat oh i'm sorry dude i didn't mean to do that uh apologies now you get double the coffee <laughs> just razzing you have a killer show thank you man i appreciate that i'm sorry i i didn't mean to to miss your super chat i feel a little frazzled and like i've had a lot of coffee today actually I'm pretty wired right now which feels good a good sleep last night um yeah 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 victor says when i lived in thailand many years ago uh thai used to learn english by watching movies and tv shows yeah it's common i mean that's how most of the folks i know over in uh it's like really interesting my friends from holland i have some friends or netherlands i guess these days uh i've got some friends from there that that have almost no accent at all in english and i'll ask them like why and they're like well because we used to get american tv shows with no um uh, dubbed whatever you know so it was like they were listening to the actual english you know american english sort of accents and stuff and that's why their english is so unaccented whereas in germany uh they don't actually have that so it's just like different you know so yeah it's a great way to learn learn a language i think just you know get to a point where you're You've got, you know, the the top thousand words in any language and then start watching TV and movies and stuff and see if you can put it all together. Uh, do you think the newer Friedman and Sir Master Volume improvements could one day wean guys like Lando and Henderson off the SD9? That's a good question. I mean, I don't think so, actually, because I think the SD9 is a part of the feel and sound that they like, you know, like that's the distortion circuit. That, I mean, you know, it's it's a different sound, you know? So it's like, then, then just the front end distortion in an amp. So, you know, maybe once you're used to that, it's hard to, to get away from it. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Peter there with a the super chat. Thank you, my friend. I appreciate that. Uh, any plans to play the West coast? Well, I mean, there's another band, the same, the folks that do CRS, this band that I play with, uh, called Rumors of Fleetwood Mac, which is a really high, high quality, actually sanctioned by Fleetwood Mac, uh, Fleetwood Mac band. And they play the West Coast. So, you know, they played Orpheum in LA. They played, uh, um, I think, The Grove in Anaheim. Um, so, you know, they do nice 
theaters and stuff like that in in California. You know, they played Vegas. Uh, so I don't see why this thing wouldn't end up following the same path as long as the the interest is there. So we'll see. Uh, let's see. Team It's There. Howdy, Pete, and everyone out there in YouTube land. Hope you're having a great Sunday and a swell tour. Thanks for everything you do. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. We've got a super sticker there from Mr. Collateral. Mr. Collateral, thanks so much. Appreciate that. And thanks, Peter, for the super chat. Appreciate you. I think I'm going to go relatively soon, guys, so that I can have a little time before sound check because we're going to do kind of a long sound check today, uh, doing uh, a little bit of tweaking on mixes and stuff like that in your mixes as well as front of house. So. Uh, what do you think of pure nickel strings for rocking out? I do actually quite like nickel, but they just don't last. Um, but I like the tone, and I like them on my EVH guitars. Like I like to actually use that set, you know, the the forty to you know the fifteen gauge G and a forty gauge low E uh, six string. Uh, the same set that he would have used. I I really like the feel of it and. The, it, Sorry, guys. Just going downstairs where the internet hopefully stronger. It doesn't seem to be getting any stronger, but it seems like it's at least working here. So, whatever. I'm going to stand here for a few minutes and hope that it doesn't uh, cut out. Uh, what were we talking about? Oh yeah, nickel. So yeah, so I, I, I like them on that on that one guitar on the the on my Van Halen guitars. They sound really good on those. Uh, have you considered setting up in Vegas as a house band gig? Mm, I don't know if that's what we would really do. Although it would probably work, but um, it's not a terrible idea at some point doing a residency somewhere. Um. I mean, sometimes we do two nights in certain cities and stuff, but it's uh, a good question. Let's see, like whether or not that would be a, a good move. Do you have any more tours lined up? I'm doing some, some gigs with Fight for Fighting. I'm actually back here. Uh, I played Clearwater, Florida, Orlando, I think. Um, I'm not exactly sure what the, I think it's theater shows. Uh, just a short little run, like three shows in May. So if anybody's in Florida and they want to come see Fight for Fighting, probably on their website, I think, but, um, and then I've got another two weeks with five for fighting in August. And other than that, to be honest, I sort of feel like I've been on the road for six months. Um, pretty solid, like a few, a couple weeks at home here and there, but other than that, I've been gone since like, I feel like, you know, Nick Carter rehearsals were the end of, I think it was like the end of August. And, um, I feel like I've been touring since then almost. So, um, I'm kind of looking forward to a little bit of time at home, to be honest. <laughs> but so the idea of a couple weeks in August and, you know, a week in May sounds really good to me with a lot of time at home in June and July. I've been kind of, you know, the YouTube is getting neglected and stuff like that. I need to put some time into that. And not to mention, I want to get some new music recorded. So, yeah. Yep. 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 Okay. I'll go down to the bottom of the chat here. Uh, that's Eston says, uh, Pete, you always make this such a pleasure. Thanks, man. So do you guys. It's always super fun. Uh, hope you can get your current crew up here to the San Francisco Bay Area. Would love to catch your current show. I was thinking, you know, it'd be fun to just play like a bunch of theaters in California, you know, <laughs> do like everywhere from San Francisco south, you know, cut over to Sacramento and then also play like, you know, San Luis Obispo, uh, Santa Barbara, and down into Orange County, down to San Diego. You could probably do eight or ten shows in California and have it be really cool. So, 
Uh, where's the Screeching Banshee today? The Screeching Banshee actually had a gig in LA last night, if you can believe that. So we had one in Florida the night before last. He was there. He flew home all the way across country to LA to do a gig last night. And then he got on a plane at 6 a.m. this morning to come all the way back here and do. And he kind of does that routinely. And I sort of think he's a little bit insane. So, yep. Back down the spinal tap stairs. That's true. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, guys, I think I'm going to split because uh, there's James Cole. You want to sign off with me? What you got? Buy some stuff. I bought some beer. Some India Pale Ale. What'd you get? American. I went, to the, I went to the brewery. Oh yeah. Got some local. The place. Just here. Yeah, they do take them. The guy that we went where we went. No, I've had, no, I've had another one. I'll take it. Oh. Yeah. yeah, I wonder if they've got a cider. So I would buy a cider. They do, they've got about sixteen different, and anything they don't do by the can, they will. Oh, let's go there right now. Let's do that. Uh, Matthew Long. Congratulations on winning a guitar, my friend. Has he? Has, is he here? I don't think he. He was in the chat, which is like I know, I know. But whatever, guitar, guitar. You guys will contact him, and I think you guys are probably watching this. And let him know. Mm -hmm. uh, he'll find out one way or another, mm -hmm. right? Um, on that note, we're going to take a. I know I was talking about soundtrack. Now I had to get busy and get busy working. But he mentioned a local brewery. Now we're going to go there real quick, right? Aren't we? We got time? Okay, that's twenty go. minutes. All right. Thank you guys so much. This was really fun. Uh, thanks for uh, tuning in to Sunday Live, and I'll see you next week. I don't know where I'll be next week, but I'll be somewhere where I'll do this again. We will be someplace. in Reading. Oh, really? Yeah. Is it a day off? Or no. Gig day? Gig day. I'm lying. Huh? We won't be in Reading. Where will we be? Are you talking about Rochester? Yes. Uh, day off or gig day? Day off. Day off in Rochester. I'll be here Sunday Live. See ya. Take care, everybody. Congratulations. Thanks to all who came to the clinics. Thanks to Matthew Long and uh, thanks to Sir for partnering on the guitar giveaway and everything. Good stuff. Appreciate you guys. Everybody have a great week. See ya. Bye.